What's up guys? This is Kaylee Johnson here with Digital Journey. If you're a person that's wanting to learn social media, maybe that's just for you personally, maybe it's for your business, this is the right place for you. Today I am honored to have on Naomi Rose Everly on the show. Um, Naomi Rose is an expert in LinkedIn and she's a great profile writer. She spent the last 10 years helping people position themselves as the go-to experts within their industry and structuring their business so prospects come to them pre-sold and ready to buy. She's the founder of The Profile Company and The Expert Economy and the author of The Expert Economy, What to Put on Your LinkedIn Profile and Grassroots to Green Shots. Naomi Rose, thank you so much for coming on here. Oh, pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. So can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into all of this and what your journey looks like? Ooh, well, I started off um, in 2005 declaring at the age of 27, I am going to be a life coach. Um, and I got started, got under some really great mentors, um, took all their advice, but I interpreted it in my little brain. It's a little bit wrong and um, very eager, for, full of energy. Um, I made every mistake in the book and I can confirm those mistakes are most certainly in the book because I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's my book, Grassroots to Green Shoots, um, here, which is the six fundamental principles to help early stage business owners prepare the ground for growth. And in here, you're going to find lots of um, snippets that when people are qualified to stand for, from the stage and teach you, uh, they've long forgotten Um these things and think just assume everybody knows it but they actually don't um so it covers off a lot of stuff about time and balancing things people's great ideas of what you could do but actually you're not set up correctly you're not funded correctly so you actually can't do what they say and uh, one of my mentors actually came and apologized for, to me he said i gave you all these ideas and you tried to do them but i realized you're in a completely wrong, different position to what i thought and it was really humble of him so um, so that was back in the day. And yes, it went belly up. I made every mistake in the book. I had to hold my hands up and just stop. Um, writing the book was healing um, to really make sense of what had happened. Um, and then from there, um, I got invited to uh, sell LinkedIn training. And I did that for two years. And part of my way of getting people on the phone to want to speak to me was to offer a LinkedIn profile and strategy review. So what I did was I spent half an hour with people talking to them about their LinkedIn profile whilst hearing them articulate what they do and what they were passionate about um, and realizing that what they were saying didn't didn't line up at all. Um, so when the business I was working in went down the corporate route um, and changed dramatically, I said, no, my passion is actually helping small businesses to grow because I, you know, I've made every mistake in the book. Um, writing the book was um, part of a program to become a key person of influence. I then worked um, for somebody else in a company called Marketing Help for Coaches, which she actually ended up giving me that business to take over wow. based on the fact that I'd written this book. Um, and yeah, and then I was selling this LinkedIn training and I was like, this is the journey. This is where I have to be. I have to work with these individuals. So I just started pitching like, do you want me to write your LinkedIn profile for you? Because you haven't done anything since I spoke to you about it. Um, the people are too close to their own topic to see it. Yes. They're not wordsmiths and they don't have time. So they said, yeah, let's do that. Um, and I started doing that. And I was probably about 18 months in of just churning out these LinkedIn profiles for people. When I started again to realize that a lot of the, I was giving away a lot of suggestions of how people could structure their business and their sales funnel um, because it was missing. I couldn't get they didn't have the information to give me when I was mm -hmm. interviewing them. So I started giving them the solution in the conversation, but then they didn't implement it because they had no right. ownership over it. So then I brought in my coaching program um, and it's been eight years now coaching people to build their own businesses as experts. My, um, my typical client is somebody who has a subject which is hard to describe and impossible to Google because people don't know that they have a problem to look for a solution or they know that they have a problem, but they don't know a solution exists. And yes. SEO only works when somebody knows uh, my tap, tap is burst. I need a plumber. So if you have that educational that knowledge around your problem, keywords are going to work. So there's a real sort of niche market there that I really work with is, is these experts. And, and LinkedIn is the platform for that, which obviously we'll go into. That's amazing. And I love what you said about taking it back down to the basics, because when we're looking at our own field, we know so much and we can mm. forget that not everyone knows all of that. 
And so when you start talking to someone, it can be overwhelming because they don't understand half of the things you're saying. And yeah. so I loved how you were talking about taking it back down to the basics, knowing, you know, how do I present my problem for, you know, my, my solution? How can I present it that this is going to help fix the problem, especially when mm -hmm. it comes to more niche industries? So that's really yeah. amazing. That's definitely something that is very needed and a lot of people get discouraged by. You know, I have this amazing solution and no one, no one is buying it. No one knows about it. And it's like, well, let's show you how to make people know that. So I think that's yeah. amazing. And it's a real area of passion as well, actually, if I may say, because a lot of people, they, they take the moment to go into business because they are um, passionate about something. They see a problem in the world that they're solving. And the moment that they take that step is usually because they've taken a redundancy or they've got inheritance. And without a coach and someone to point out where you're going, what you're doing wrong, you will hide behind the computer and you will create and think you're building your business. And I've just and, and also just get pulled into all these high pay, high cost training courses. I must learn email marketing today or I must learn Instagram today. Right. Um, and then all the money is gone and they haven't solved the problem once for anybody. Um, and then the industry that they're in has probably moved on so quickly that whilst they've been distracted doing that, they're no longer experts at what they do anymore. They can regain it, of course, but they probably have to go back into work. Um, and it's really disheartening. So it's something, a problem I really want to see fixed. That's amazing. Yeah, very, very true. And that's one thing like a digital journey. We talk a lot about, you know, getting down to the basics of it. Um, because if you all of a sudden, you know, say, for example, I want to be on Instagram and you see all these other big companies out there and you might strive to be like them, but maybe you need to start off at the basics so that you can continue to grow your business yeah. as a business and not just focus yeah. on it on a social media platform. Yeah, it, that's so true. You're so right, Katie, because it's all about the money at the end of the day. Are you bringing right, in exactly. revenue? Yeah. And if you're doing social media to match up to an influencer or a business that's got a team of 10 behind them you're you a you don't you can't compete you're not matching that but if right. you're, you're only up putting like 70 percent of your time into this new marketing that isn't proven it isn't necessarily where your customers are um but if you're not actually doing the business of selling um the product which you know for service-based businesses is a lot harder because you can get distracted really quickly on doing all these other things and before you know it you're, you're working 150 percent um, and you've mm -hmm. not got the life that you want. And it's also not paying dividends as much as, I don't know, putting an advert in a paper. You know, we have to balance up the old world and what works and how social media will help us to do it even better. But we can't yeah. avoid the things that actually once worked. We can't get rid of all these different ways of marketing that's worked all these years and just go online. Um, and then, as you said, you know, trying to match other people's strategies. Right. No, that's that's so good. So you talk about a lot um, LinkedIn profile optimization and things. How does the psychology of how people buy affect how, how your LinkedIn profile should look like? Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, a really good question. So your LinkedIn profile is your your business card. It is a place mm -hmm. where people can come and build a relationship with you. So if I go to a networking event and I look across the room, I will I will judge whether someone looks scary, well put together or someone I, you know, avoid or go near, basically. Um, and you, you do, you make a lot of judgments really quickly as to whether someone's worth yes. your time or not, based on how they dress and presenting themselves. So that on LinkedIn is your photo. Um, so your photo is really important, as everyone will tell you. Then the next thing is, is you go up to that person, you say, oh, what do you do? And they'll give you a very quick top line. And that top line is your headline. Um, and so, it, you know, there's that replica. What's, well, what's your name? What do you do? That's, that's literally those three elements. With the headline, you want to think about if um, people are coming up on the side, recommended, recommended, recommended you might also like to connect with, um, a little bit, a snippet of your headline shows there. If yes. you comment on someone else's comment uh, or post, a snippet of your LinkedIn headline will show under your name. It's 47 characters. So those 40 characters, 47 characters need to set the context of the conversation you have with people. So I looked at one today. I was typing a comment and I saw just above someone else had um, put a comment. And they they wrote something like helping qu quite dis dis quite destructive, like all these words that described, but it never actually said what they did. 
Mm, and so yep. I'm like, well, I don't know if I want to work click on your um, profile because you haven't actually set context. Right. And right. then when you're reading somebody's comment, are they just making a comment from their own language, their own knowledge, or are they making a comment based on actually this is my area of expertise? Yes. So when those keywords show in the first 47, they'll go, that's an interesting comment and it's your profession. Now I'm going to click through. That is, you, yeah. You great. just make a comment, people are like, yeah, I think they might not be in that industry. It's something else. So they're just sharing some knowledge. I could have done the same thing and said something different. Um, so that's that's a really key way of getting people through to your profile. Um, that's yeah. really important and it sets the conversation. Um, and, you know, we now do have the ability to put a custom link underneath to like mm-hmm. where people should go next. If you want to book an appointment, take a scorecard, something that's going to draw people in. So that's at the top and the banner is also working there as well. And you do want to do your banner because, again, it's that presentation. How much effort have I put into this? But now I know when I go on and looked at a LinkedIn profile, if I see they don't have a banner, I'm automatically like, hmm, yeah, that looks strange because, you know, they weren't able to take the even the three minutes to create a banner. Um, can the do it for you for free. That, it's like, how, how serious are you about your business? How serious are you about wanting to do this if you're not willing to present well? I love the illustration yeah. you used about meeting someone in person. You know, if you're at a professional business event and you're just wearing jeans and a T-shirt, you know, you didn't even put in the effort to fit in a good environment. And I love I love that mm. illustration with that. Yeah. And of course, the banner um, not only brings color and life to your profile, but it's also a way of, again, setting the converse- context of the conversation. Yes. So if you've already got those key words in the first few words of your headline, don't put them again in your banner. Now take the conversation further and ask some big open question that, oh, oh, I haven't thought of that before. You know, it elicits that kind of response. What we then want to do is come down to the about section. And this is something people get really wrong a lot of the time. It has to be written in first person to start off with. Um, and you you really are setting the context of the problem that you solve. So people, when they know that they have a problem, they can look for a solution because they have the words that go with it. Mm-hmm. But actually, most buying decisions for most products start with someone going, well, how do I fix this? What is this? Um, and sometimes they don't even know they have a problem to even look for it. Yes. So something you've said has got their attention, they've come through. That first paragraph needs to set the context of the problem that you solve. What is going on in that industry? What are we seeing? So that might be to use percentages, like 60% of females don't put themselves forward for promotion. And this creates a complete lack of, you know, at the, t- the higher levels and glass ceiling or something. And so you go, people go, oh, wow, that's a fact I didn't know before. And um, that's interesting. And that's the response that you want because they're like, oh, that's. And, and the thing to recognize as well is that 80 percent of your people, maybe more than that, 80 percent of people coming to your LinkedIn profile are not your ideal clients. They're people that can refer. And yes. and, and, and only probably only 2 percent that come are actually going to be your clients. Um, but that doesn't mean to say we speak only to the client. We've actually got to speak to the entire network because that's what you do in a networking event, right? Right. You speak to everybody and everybody is valuable. So everyone coming to your profile is valuable. So we want to set the context of the conversation um, that we're having with people with that problem statement. And then we want to say how you fix it. And that could be at my company, blah, 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 or as a head coach of da, 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 or as a social media um, coach, this is exactly how I help, full stop. Or you can go, this is exactly how I help. Um, as a da, 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 I help people do da, 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 by doing such and such. Right. And then a bit of a credibility statement as to why you're qualified. And then you want to go a bit more into the problem that you solve and always end with a call to action. What should I do now um, that I've got your attention? If you are somebody who um, really likes to work with the very small businesses just getting started on social media, which is yourself, um, I'm sure there might be some others, but it's important to really define that because if you don't define it, you might get the wrong people coming through. Um, Definitely. And you need to, yes, you need to be really clear who it is because that helps with your referrals as well. But you need a really cool, strong, cool, strong call to action. And usually that isn't booking for a 15 minute chat. You actually need some kind of diagnostic um, that people can ask questions about. Um, and I can share a link um, as well for you to a, a a 30 day trial of a score app and score app is where you can program in a questionnaire and it'll take people through 
um, and then brings them to like, oh, yeah, we do have this problem. And here's a diagnostic mm-hmm. that tells me a little bit more about it. So that's a really strong call to action, as yes. well as booking for a diagnostic with a name. Right. So then because it's got a name, you can lead people through a conversation, lead them through an exploration as what their problem is and give them a firm recommendation at the end. Or it's a 15 minute chat. It's just a chat. It's got no structure. No one's in right. charge. And it's like, what are like, we going to be it, talking about? Is it really secret yeah. with a sales pitch? You know, what what is this 15 minute chat kind of thing? It can be a lot more um, intimidating and and people don't like to go into situations where they're not aware of what's going on. Yeah, and exactly. where there's that unknown and that uncertainty. So being really clear with it and, you know, upfront is definitely the way to go. Yeah. And that is also how we script it as well. And this is why I said I stopped just just doing the LinkedIn profile, because the naming of it, how what happens in it, how you script the beginning of that conversation, how you finish that conversation, because at the end, you want to be able to pitch your solution. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are these these things all have to be thought out behind the scenes before you start writing a LinkedIn profile. I usually coach my clients for 10 sessions before I even say right now it's the time to write because there's so much to figure out like your packages and that the problem, the messaging, why you're the expert, your story, all of these different things and they have to come through all in that about section. Um so yeah, that will be that bit. And then I always recommend for people to always put an entry in for the company they're they're currently working in, which is probably their own in the case of who we're talking to um and in here this is where once they've read everything else you need to really nail this is who i am and this is what i do do not get confused (laughs) because someone who's like oh does she actually do this thing this sounds really interesting you know or it says that but let me just check that's when they're going to read and that's what Mm -hmm. they're going to know so really nail it down in there um and if necessary put like your position in the company there um, especially if you've got a few people in the company, um, you can do this on all of them and have all of them have a little voice about why they love the company and the product and serving customers. Um, so the next bit you can actually put like, I'm a self, I enjoy being on the front desk or, you know, right. such and such. A little bit more um, about your personality and things. Yeah. And what, what you love about the company. So the next thing is, especially for um, people selling services, um, this is a big thing I design people with is the package you know, what is the big bells and whistles package that you offer? And then people go, oh, I don't, that's a bit much. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. And then they'll, but they'll step forward again for your middle of the road package. And then they'll go, oh, still don't know you. And then they go, oh, look, a free call. Um, you know, I can have this diagnostic yes. thing. Yes. Oh, I'll do that. And in they go. Um, the other quick thing to say, because I know we're getting short on time, is there's so much in people's history and past as to why they do what they do that often gets lost and needs to be pulled forward. Once I had a client who was um, a coach and he was tendering uh, along with a few other people for a coaching gig. They were taking three, they'd taken three months over deciding who to choose. And they decided in this particular meeting, they were going to sit down and look at people's LinkedIn profiles to make the decision. And I had spoken to him just before. And I said, why do you say coaching with the precision of a Michelin star chef? Like, where does that come from? You can't say that unless you're a Michelin star chef, surely. <laughs> what do you mean a precision? Like, you know, and um, it turned out he'd been a Michelin star chef in his career. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And he puts this in um, and I get him to put that as an entry because all of these entries make sense. Um, or some don't, like. I worked in a pub to get extra money. He would not. <laughs> but right, it doesn't right. contribute to the story and where does it fit? So he puts it in his profile um, and then he gets a call um, before I next speak to him. And he goes, like, they gave me the job. And he goes, guess what the reason was? And it turned out that the company that was trying to make this decision was a restaurant. Wow. And through all of that, he'd never told them I'm a Michelin star chef. There was no question as a business coach they were going to hire him with that background. And yet it wasn't on his profile. Um, So this is really important. And then also, if you've got lots of positions where you've gone up through the ranks promotion or you're on lots of board of directors or something like that, condensing that down into one or two entries is really important because the first four entries are the ones that are going to really nail it um, in terms of, oh, that's where they've been before. That's what they do. Most people aren't going to click on 15 extra experiences and really scroll through. (laughs) So these these things are really, really important. And what you're going to end up doing, because you're speaking about the problem that you solve, you're going to start come away from being a commodity where you're, you know, the person knows what they're after and what they're looking for as a service. 
um, and therefore they can phone up three or four of your competitors and price compare. What you're looking for, and that is what's called a red ocean, and what, mm-hmm. where everyone's thrashing about, all the fish are thrashing about. It's quite a horrible picture, actually. You want to swim <laughs> away into a blue ocean, and you want to talk about the problems that you solve and this the symptoms of the problem that you solve. Because when you swim away and solve to that, your customers are going to go, oh, oh, what's this? That's my problem. They're going to identify with it. And then they'll do a little bit more research and they'll diagnose and say, gosh, actually, that is my problem. Um, at which point they'll maybe try and do it themselves. And they go, oh, can't do this myself. I will invest um, a sol- in some in a solution here. And then they'll book in for that conversation. So that that actually is the psychology of sales. It's like, oh, I oh, I have a problem. Oh, <laughs> and right, they keep exactly. Going. Yeah, we have to talk to the symptoms of the problem we solve. So as long along with your content, you also want to be doing that on your profile. And um, what I've just done there is literally, you don't know that there's a problem you're solving. I'm the problem who can solve it. Let's diagnose a little bit more about it. Um, can you do it for yourself? Probably not. Let's book you in for a call. Um, so that that's literally how it comes about. Um, yeah. And uh, there's a lot I could say about all of that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, that's 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 really great. And that's why one thing we focus on a lot is even focusing on who your customer is. Dive into the target audience. Dive into you know what is their problem? What are they wanting to solve? Because if you go in and try to launch social media without knowing those things, you're going to run into a lot of questions, a lot of roadblocks, and it's going to take you a lot more time versus if starting off yeah. and saying, what is the customer's problem? Do they know they have this problem? How can we inform them about it? Um, and so I think it's really great the key emphasis you put on in knowing the problem. Mm. That way you can present the solution and making sure that they know the problem. Um, yeah. Because sometimes we can know yeah. that something's wrong. We're not doing this, but we don't know, you know, what the reasoning is behind why we're doing this. Um, you know, yeah. maybe we're scared to try something new, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so just being able to dive into focusing on what the consumer wants and then tailoring all that around that. I really think that's great. Yeah. And also niching, standing out, you know, don't yes. just be a personal trainer, be someone that focuses on strengthening the pelvis. Exactly. You know, it's that kind of niching it down, but you still do all the other stuff. It's just that right. knockout message that stands out. Right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate this. Where can all our listeners find you on if they want to learn more about this? Yeah. So obviously I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> Naomi Rose Everly, you'll find me on there. My company is called The Profile Company. Um, and I do have a special gift gift for your um, listeners, and that is my book, Magnetize Your Expertise on LinkedIn. Um, and I'd love to give a digital copy away to anybody who wants to um, get a copy of that. Um, there's a school Thank card, you. surprise, prize on my LinkedIn. Um, and if you want to come and take that school card, you can get the, the book, a digital copy for free at the end. Um, I've actually put that specially aside for you as well as a, as a, um, a page so if people go to the profile dot company so that's the full word company the profile dot company forward slash digital journey they can on there find a little note from me a thank you for listening to this um a little note from me just to follow up the conversation from from this podcast and they can get in touch that way so it's the profile dot company forward slash digital journey and i'll also send you the uh, scorecard app um score app. that is that is fantastic. And we'll have all of that linked down below. So if you're driving or doing something, we got it for you. You can check it out there. Um, thank you so much again um, for coming on. This was a pleasure for ha- pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.